It's 2025 and by now I thought I'd have a friend named Devin, but instead I got a powerful AI agent that helps me with my PRs, fixes my bugs, tells me when I'm wrong and helps me ship code faster. And that's what we're gonna go over. We're gonna check out Devin AI by Cognition Labs and see how powerful this AI agent is and does it really boost productivity for those shipping code. It started to get dark, so we went back inside, but here's three things I want to cover. I want to start off with Deep Wiki. Now, when you go to Devon AI, you're kind of met with this text box. Here's what I find interesting. If you click on Deep Wiki on the top left, you can add whatever repo you want. I've already added two repos. Let's go to UPAC AI. And what it does is, I don't know how this works, but it literally contextualizes your entire code base and gives you an architectural breakdown. Like I'm talking about, I'm looking at this, I'm looking, this is one of the hackathon projects I built and I'm looking at this and I'm like, dang, I really did all this, right? So for example, we can look at AI content generation, right? So it says here, AI agent architecture, we can click on this mermaid diagram and you can see this is some input context, the video title, the video data, which is title, transcription, and the manual transcription. Like you can add your own transcription if the video is too massive. Uh, profile data, like the channel name, content type, niche, tone, and then the agent output. So like if let's say the agent already generated some output and I didn't like it, I can feed it back as context. And then mood board, like you can create your own mood board. And then and we could see here the different AI agents. We could see a title agent, a description agent, a tweets agent, and a thumbnail agent. And all the three agents are powered by GPT-40. But then the thumbnail one uses GPT image one, uh, vision, the vision model. It doesn't use Dolly, but I still have some code there that I didn't comment out, which is why it brought it out here. And like you see like detailed instructions. Like I can even go on this other code base, for example. And this is basically a project that allows you to create Apple passes. And I can go to Pass Management API and it'll see that a user uploads an image, right? Fills out a pass creation form. And then I can see the API routes that are hit, right? I have some analytics tracking, a success event, an error event on post hog. And then information gets tracked in a database. I then have some services that do some work. And then there's some external dependencies that I use like Cloudflare R2, uh, image kit CDN. So the deep wiki is by far one of the best ways to understand a code base. Like with Devin, you could start with $20 and do a pay as you go. I think this feature alone is worth it because the amount of time I spend working on large code bases and most of the time is really just understanding how it works. This was a huge time saver. The second thing I kind of wanted to show you is what I think Devin excels at, which is bug fixes, refactoring, or adding new features. And I'm going to show you a real life example. So there's this one project I'm working on for a client. They were using a payment processor called Fanbase and I suggested to use Polar because I was using better auth for their authentication and I wanted to do that migration. Now, I'll be honest with you, the migration was a fat one. It was a big one. What, 978 lines of code. It's not an easy migration. I know it's not a lot of lines of code, but this is payments we're talking about. And I used Devon for this. And when I tell you working with Devin on this migration, it felt like I had an assistant. There are certain tasks that are a little bit more tedious that I just don't want to do or can save me a lot of time. And I literally worked with Devin like it was a fellow engineer. And even when it created the PR, I just love how comprehensive the PRs are with all the information with, and then it'll give you like a human checklist, a diagram of all the things that happen. And I can show you how I did it. If I go back to Devin and then I go to my session, and I go here, swap lock screen payments. You could tell it here, I want to swap lock screen payments, use Polar system. You need to look at this repo. So I gave it the specific repo and then it created a plan. And you can see this is a detailed plan. This is a plan it created and it asked me to confirm. I confirmed, it got to working and then it gave me the first PR, right? And then I reviewed the PR and I made some changes and I told it we use better auth for auth. So why not use the polar plugin? So originally I had some sort of weird auth system and then I migrated over to better auth and I told it use the polar plugin. And guess what it did? It used the polar plugin and you can see it was successful. So the next thing I asked it to do is to update the pricing page to send users to polar instead of the previous payment processor, which was fan base. And my favorite part with this all is I pushed some code changes manually. So I told it, I pushed some code changes manually, review the current state and make a PR. So it pulled the changes I made. It checked out the changes that I made. It pulled the changes that I made. It told me all the things that I added. 
And what was really cool about Devin was I was working with it. So there were some changes I made to the PR and I told it, pull the changes and check it out. And then it did. And it showed me the additions I made, the changes I made. And I will say this, working with Devin, and, and it sounds weird because Devin is a human and working with Devin, um, especially when it came to this specific task, which is it's a real production code base. This is for a real client. Like this is not like a vibe code project. It was pleasantly well to work with. It was presently nice. I was pretty uh, shocked to have liked it and enjoyed it this much. Now, here's another PR Devin fix. Now, this one is interesting because it's literally one line. It's a one line change. But when I tell you, I spent hours combing through the code trying to figure out why this bug. And essentially, the bug was Apple passes that were generated would expire after 24 hours. And for the life of me, I'm like, why is this not working? And Devin, in literally a couple of minutes, not only caught it, but told me what the issue was, made the change, made the PR. I reviewed it, merged it, and it's now in prod. This is insane. And the last thing that I found was pretty cool is you can run parallel tasks with Devin. So you can see here that I had two sessions here where I wanted to swap out lock screens payments, and then I wanted to fix the passes not being active. You can run these two sessions simultaneously. So you can have multiple agents running with Devin, multiple Devins running. I don't know if that's the correct verbiage. But between deep wiki, being able to fix bugs, refactor and add new features and running parallel tasks or having parallel agents running, Devin sits in a sweet spot where it is the perfect assistant uh, agent to add in your team. I would highly suggest if you're building an actual project and maybe you have a couple engineers working with you or you're a company or you're a big company, small company, small team, big team, if you're building something serious, Devin is one of those additions where it, to me, to be honest, it just makes 100% sense. This is definitely not for the vibe coders, but this is for those who are looking to build serious projects. I'm going to be implementing this in a lot of the products that I want to launch or a lot of the contracting work that I do or my team does. Devin is definitely one of those additions. And that's pretty much it for this video. If you want to check Devin out, the links will be in the description down below. Let me know how you've been using it. Let me know how it's been working for you. I've been Mike. You've been awesome. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.